So this is my little sister. Hi. And we are staying with them as part of our trip. And we are loving it. We are loving it. It's been super fun to have some togetherness time because we live so far apart. It's really nice. Um, We've been trying for a year to do this. Yeah, right? last last year we were going to try and do it, and then there were all the fires, and it it was just like, oh, why um, would we want to go up there just so that we can like stay inside for a long time? Yeah, <laughs> it, it just wouldn't have been fun. Yeah. Um, so the topic that we cha- we picked today is something that's really near and dear to both of our hearts. Um, it's hypnobirthing, and um, my sister just had a new baby. And it feels like for the first few weeks and even months after you have a baby, you really remember vividly how your birth went. And so it's kind of nice to get these details in there uh, while they're still really fresh. Um, So between the two of us, I had the first child. And it was really difficult, really traumatic, really hard to recover from. I had a home birth. And I was really shocked and upset with how difficult of a time I had. And when my sister had her first baby, she also had a difficult birth, but in in even more difficult circumstances than I did, and and yet she also managed to stay um, drug free for the most part, as far as painkillers and that kind of thing. So we're going to talk about the advice that she gave me after her first baby, and now the method of hypnobirthing that we both really like to use when we have babies. Um, where I found out about it was before I had my first baby. Um, is he about a year and a half younger than Paige, I think. Um, and so I had had a dear friend that was a nurse that her instructor said of all the different methods you can do, um, of Bradley, Lamaze, she really highly recommended the hypnobirthing method, that it was the most successful of any other method for going natural. And even if you do have to get, um, a, a, um, Epidural. Usually, people go longer without having to get it. They can handle a longer birthing period before they get it. So I was really excited to be able to have that as my first experience. And I had um, nurse midwives in a hospital, which was really nice. So I had them, and they were very supportive of the method as well. Um, I had pitocin, and um, it wasn't how I imagined it at all. <laughs> it was very intense. I like to say that I felt like I was in a well and I could have scratched myself out of the well with my fingernails because that's how intense it was. And I was ready to bite my husband at one point because that was just how much I couldn't handle. Well, I handled it, but it was very intense. And um, with our second child, um, I still... We had him naturally, and I didn't use any Pitocin with him either, but what happened with him differently is I wasn't on Pitocin, and everything went along as normal, but I used all the methods in their book um, to induce labor because my mom was leaving the next day, and I was determined to have him while she was still in town. Mm -hmm. And so we did every single thing we could. I was eating the eggplant parmesan that they talk about, um, anything they call it hugs before drugs in their book. And we basically did everything. And we started that at probably eight o'clock that morning. And that second child came by three o'clock that afternoon. And even though um, I was basically still self helping um, with the oxytocin, the natural oxytocin, it was still intense because I was creating my own oxytocin, but it was a completely different experience than the first baby. Um, it was very nice, mostly calm, and when I hit transition, I looked at the nurse and I said, when am I going to hit transition? And she looked at me and said, you're already done with transition. Yeah. And I said, what? <laughs> I'm already done with transition? And she couldn't believe that I had been through all that. I was an eight and a half when I got to the hospital. And within half an hour of being there, I'd already had the baby. Um, and because I was so calm, the nurses were asking me questions you would ask somebody when they're just being admitted. She wouldn't believe me that I was far along. Um, and then with our third... Um, something that was pretty amazing about her birth is we decided to live in the same town as my in-laws and our car broke down on the way and because my contractions were 15 minutes apart we decided to take the kids with us so that they could just stay with grandma instead of the friend and on the way they got closer together and then our car broke down (laughs) and it was 20 degrees below zero and we could feel the car cold coming in And um, I was, to be able to use the method you learn in this, you really learn to tune into your body, 
and talk to your body. Yeah. And um, I literally sat back and I said, okay, baby girl, I know that you're ready to come right now, but can you slow the contractions down just a little bit? We're not quite ready. And they went from five minutes apart to 15 minutes apart until we got to grandma and grandpa's house. And then we kind of got breakfast and relaxed. We were there for two hours. And then I got the urge to push. It was time to go to the hospital. So it's pretty cool how the methods worked um, to be able to be really in tune with my own body and able to even help a difficult situation when our right. car started again. Um, Do you want to show them the book? Yeah. So this is called Hypnobirthing. Uh, there we go. Um, I did it with an instructor the first time. And um, I liked my instructor, but she wasn't very specific about what I needed to do at the beginning. And so by the time I was like eight months along, I was just finishing up the class, and she was starting to tell me about nutrition, which kind of irked me, to be honest, because it's an expensive class. So you want to make sure you're going to a good instructor. And I was thankful that I already knew about nutrition and what I should be doing. Um, so I didn't feel like I had missed out on that, mm -hmm. but I kind of was a little bit ticked off <laughs> that I had spent so much and now my baby's eight months long. Um, but I, what they recommend is that you read the book at least twice before you have your baby, which I would really recommend. With each baby, I've tried to read it at least once. And then um, there's a CD that comes along with it that you practice relaxing during. And there's certain breathing techniques that you do. Um, there's what they call sleep breathing that you do during one phase. Um, there's birthing breathing that you're supposed to do. Um, and I think there's another one called relaxing. It's in the book. Um, but during different phases of your labor, you practice doing that. And for my first labor, I took in the CD that you listen to. It's this really pretty harp music with a lady that's basically doing hypnosis, really um, gentle things like now close your eyes, let all the wrinkles go away from your eyes, now go to your jaw bones. Like she kind of works the way through your whole body, helping you to relax with this really, really soft heart music in the background. I love it. And um, I felt awkward with my first pregnancy, turning it on the CD and having everybody in and out listening to that. And so I went through my first labor without any of that support of all the practice I had done. And then with all the other three, I used earbuds, and I had my little nano, and then my instructions to my husband, because he didn't really like doing the stuff that the husbands can do where they talk it through. He kind of felt weird doing that. So I just listened, and his instructions were, don't let anyone bother me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then with my second, um, the nurse, they actually had me go get dressed by myself, and then he was outside the door while they were asking me all these questions at eight and a half it's already dilated and I kept saying I need my husband he can come answer these questions and they kept telling me that they couldn't find him and so it, that was my traumatic point of that whole labor was the fact that my husband wasn't with me at eight and a half while I was right. trying to relax so his second rule is you can't leave my sight right <laughs> I don't care what's going on so he, you need to pee we'll find a bucket you stay with me yeah or I go with you basically right? <laughs> don't leave my side um, but these CDs are amazing because you can be really relaxed Nobody talks to you, which I love, mm -hmm. because you have those in your ear. You can hear them sometimes, but they don't have to know that. And um, my husband has our birthing plan, mm -hmm. so he can look at that and know exactly what I want. And they can know what I want, and they don't have to talk to me. Right. So, anyways, those are so the last one. I have to admit, I was a little bit nervous because I figure when you've had so many good labors, odds are that God's gonna probably let you have a tough one, <laughs> or He's gonna let you have that experience. So I was really nervous. We had a really good doctor, a family doctor, which was really nice because he was the same person I met with, and that came to the delivery. Very kind doctor. Really took the time to come and, and say he'd support me. And um, all my other labors have been a really sporadic contractions when I just let it go by itself, when I didn't try to push any, creating oxytocin or anything. And so I'd have contractions like three, five, seven minutes apart, 15 minutes, two minutes, two minutes, five. And so I would be like, when should I go in? And this time we went in and we went in when they started being like that and he was born within four hours. And the nice part is my contractions. I was so relaxed between using the hypnobirthing and my, my um, relaxation. It's called Rainbow Relaxation as a CD. Um, I was so relaxed that I started hoping 
I would have another contraction because they were so far apart <laughs> and I was ready to have that baby. So it was actually a very nice, it was probably our last little one. And so it was a nice way to end, to have it be such a good labor. And um, I don't know if there's anything else. It was nice to see that it still worked just as well. And my husband has a picture of me actually sleeping between the last two contractions. Without having an epidural. With nothing, absolutely nothing. And the doctor said to me, he said, um, it was we had about an hour before, and I actually had apologized because normally when I get in there, I deliver within an hour at least. And I said, I'm sorry it's taking so long. You're having to wait. And he said, he said, I don't think, I, you're, you're doing great. He said, it's because you're so relaxed. Every contraction can work to the epitome of how it can work that you're only having to have four or three per hour. And it's doing the same thing as everybody else is having them three minutes apart. And so I literally was only having one contraction every 15 minutes, but I was still moving along just like any other woman. And I don't know, that's kind of a family thing, isn't it? I think our sister's yeah. the same way. The, the, the having them kind of sporadic is kind of similar between us. Right. So I don't know if it's really going to work that way for every woman, but the fact that you can be so relaxed that your body can work so mm. so wonderfully, because what they talk about is the the muscles across your stomach, you have the ones that hold the baby in. Let's see, these ones hold your baby in, that go across. And if you can relax those ones, then the ones that push down can work 100%. Yeah. And so um, that's what he was encouraging me about was how efficient they were. Efficient. Yeah. So am I ask, answering all your questions mm -hmm. okay? And what happened with me was that... Um, with this, with Kaya, we did the hypnobirthing. I started, I didn't do it the whole pregnancy, just like the last six weeks. And at the same time, I was getting a chiropractic adjustment every couple days. Um, we had a chiropractor who practiced um, prenatal uh, adjustments that were meant to open your pelvis. And so with the second birth, I was desperate not to be in so much pain, desperate not to hate the birthing experience. Um, and so I was doing everything I could. And towards the end, I was getting adjustments. I think the last six weeks, it was like I went in once a week. And then as we got closer, it was twice a week. And then it was every other day. And mostly it was helping with headaches and, and with sciatica and that kind of thing. And so it was really, really helpful. And at the same time, I had Paige. She was a toddler. And when I would go to take a nap or just to lay down, I would turn on the rainbow um CD relaxation and and it was teaching my body that when I went to lay down and when I was ready to relax it didn't matter what kind of distractions were happening I could learn how to re relax and so I, I didn't have earbuds buds in or anything I I would listen to it when the distractions were around or when I was doing dishes or something when I was just slowing down so that my body could figure out how to relax whether it would whether I was physically in repose or not and um, what ended up happening was that I had trained myself so, way, so well that I would be in the middle of my finals, um, my paper, my uh, senior thesis, as um, finishing my bachelor's degree. And I would actually pause in the middle of my, my presentation and just experience my Braxton Hickses without any kind of like embarrassment because I just was needing to stop talking. Let me breathe. I'm just, just going to sit here and breathe. <laughs> and so it didn't matter what was happening. I would just stop whatever I was doing and I would just relax. It was my signal to my body. A contraction means relaxation. Mm -hmm. I would be going for a walk. I would have a contraction. I would squat down on my heels and I would just rest my elbows on my knees and I would just <sighs> yeah. breathe. And what ended up happening was that the day that Kaya was born, um, we'd been trying to go on bumpy rides and, and induce labor and everything like that. But when it came down to it, that whole day I had been having contractions that were nice and strong. They weren't painful, but they were just um, consistent, not, not terribly regular, just consistent. And then um, by the end of that night, I ate dinner. I couldn't really time my contractions. They were sporadic. They were all over the place. But I went and um, I had wanted to labor longer. 
in comfort Mm because when I have a baby, as soon as I get, I I had both my babies in tubs and as soon as I hit hot water with my feet, all of a sudden I'd hit transition and I'd have the baby. And so I had wanted, I didn't know that yet. That was what happened with Paige, but I didn't know if it would happen this time. Um, And so when I started to feel slightly that just the slightest tinge of fatigue and a little bit of tightness, I told John, I want to go. I want to go to the birthing center. Let's go. And so we started, we, we called the midwife and said, we want to come. She told us we didn't need to come yet. And I'm like, I want to go now. Cause I, I, I want to relax. be able to labor for a long time and just, <laughs> I really want to relax. do what other people do. Let's yeah, sit for a I just want to be relaxed. And so she told us not to come in, but we told her, no, I really want to come in. I just, I really do. I feel like we're getting close. And I went out in the fat backyard to feed the ducks as John was packing my bag, and I threw up. We had just had dinner, and for me, throwing up was kind of the signal I was about to hit transition. It's what had happened with Paige. And so I'm like, oh, I just threw up. Oh, we got to go now. <laughs> I was in no kind of pain. I was just, I was just, um, you were focused. Aware of the signs. I was aware of the signs. I think we might need to go now. (laughs) Not that it was like going to happen in two seconds, but just like, oh, I think this is real labor because I just threw up. Yeah. And so it took us 20 minutes to get to John's parents with um, Kaya or with Paige. And we got there and my labor slowed down. So I got out and rocked some more and moved and and pushed on the top of my belly um, to try and get it to keep moving, we got to the midwives, and I wanted to just go sit on the couch, because I'm like, okay, we're here, I'm relaxed, and they wouldn't let me sit on the couch, they were like, no, 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 get off the expensive couch, get off the expensive couch, and I'm like, don't worry, I've got a long time to go, and it took them 15 minutes to do my vital statistics, because they did it wrong the first time, as soon as they did the vital statistics, <laughs> uh, uh, I just really wanted to get into the hot tub, because all of a sudden, I had a little bit of pressure, uh, John helped me get my clothes off. I got into the hot tub, and Kaya was already crowning. And I I hadn't realized that, that she was that close. <laughs> but I had I had felt a little bit of pressure and had reached up to just to just out of curiosity, like wow, I feel a lot of pressure. And her head had already we were already crowning, and I hadn't felt any pain. I hadn't felt any discomfort. Discomfort and and then intensity. Yeah, I I didn't have any kind of transaction transition. I just. How awesome. Pushed out the baby and um, thinking that I had hours left to go. But it had been, <laughs> it, it had just been so calm and I was so like unstressed out that it just, it was like my birth took care of itself and I just had to kind of show up at the end to, to hold yeah. the baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it wasn't like that with, with Paige. So I do think that the chiropractic, it's Dr. Nelson in Idaho Falls that did my chiropractic and, and his wife was equally, equally fast. Once she knew she was in labor, she had 15 minutes to get to the wow. hospital. That's awesome. Yeah. And so from the time we got to the birthing center and we had Kai, it was, it was about half an hour because it took so long for them to take my vital statistics. But, mm-hmm. um, wow, that's awesome, Julie. Yeah. So, so it was good. And, and so neither one of us have had epidurals. Um, we all had, we, we had natural births. Um, we both had difficult births and we both received a lot of self-awareness and I think um confidence after your first one you have more confidence to do Mm -hmm. it the way you want to I think with the first one I was just so self I mean I'm I'm a pretty modest person and that's a whole new experience to be out in public and trying to do things the way you want to do them so um yeah just have confidence in yourself and how you want to do it and um, I think my favorite part when I feel like it's the tough time of labor mm-hmm. is just remembering how good you feel when you're all done. Yeah. That's what I always remind myself with each one. I think, oh my goodness, when I get up, when I'm all done, I can walk around. Mm-hmm. I can, I, I feel so good. I feel like I'm on top of the world and, um, I just kind of keep that as my hindsight in, in, when, when you have a little bit of that tough time that you're just wondering if I really want to do it this way. <laughs> Was I sure I want to do it this yeah. way again? <laughs> yeah. But really, you get into it and then you think, oh, I mean, it's amazing the more that you do the relaxation, how much better you can make the whole experience be. And um, 
I highly recommend if you do decide you want to do it, make sure you do read it at least once all the way through. I've had lots of people that have asked me about it, and I've given them the details, I told them how to do it, and then they don't specifically do what I've recommended they do, and then they go in there with the same hopes it will be the same kind of an outcome. You have to do the work, yeah. and you have to be consistent, even if it is the six weeks before, like, like Jillian was saying, you need to be consistent. You need to listen to those rainbow room. They, um, in, in the book, they talk about how they had a phase where they didn't have anybody listen to those. And it went from like 80% success rate of all the people and being able to do it without any, um, any drugs. Mm -hmm. And it went down to like a 40% success yeah. rate. So it really, the things that they Huge have, difference. it's the music in the background. It's how they have you do it. I highly recommend the earbuds so people don't bother you. I think that's the hardest thing is getting, especially if you're in a hospital. Um, it's it's really hard even even with midwives I still felt distracted by them because yeah. they still had to be nurses that come in and you know check on you and so with those earbuds that made all the difference with my second one and I think it makes a difference in your mindset having read the book not just listening to the CD is that it gives you a mindset of the priority of you as the laboring mother it gives you permission to be protective of yourself and protective of your own uh, rhythm and experience because a lot of times we as women want to apologize for being an inconvenience and if instead you say well actually I'm having a baby right now so I'm not going to pay attention to you and yeah I'm going to kind of focus this is a lot I'm of work focused and this is a priority and, and I don't it, want to answer your question yeah. right now because you know I'm kind of having a contraction <laughs> yeah that it's okay to give yourself permission to learn how to tune people out during these phases of your labor because if you if if you're more aware of what other people need from you than of your process, it's really hard to um, to let go and be able to to do what you need to do. Even with this amazing doctor of this last labor, I found myself being apologetic of the fact that he's having to sit around for three hours because I was so used to a half-hour labor in the hospital. And that's what I had told him would happen with all of my others. And then said, I'd really like to come in and labor for a while. Are you okay with that? He was very supportive of that. But in the instance, I actually found myself feeling horrible because the whole time I'm thinking, oh, I could be home with this family. And here I am having a 15-minute apart contraction. And it should be going faster. And yeah. <laughs> But he was completely supportive. And um, that's why it's really important to make sure you have somebody you really can depend on. The on-call doctor was not that way at all. So I was really grateful when my doctor got there because um, when it when it's there, when they want it to be convenient for them instead of the person that's going through all the work, um, that's not conducive to being able to do it natural if yeah. you really care about doing it natural. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention too is don't try to push it along. There's so many girls that want to be able to schedule it mm. to the day that they want to have the baby, that they want to have the baby this time frame because it's the most convenient. Um, that's really pushing yourself into a experience where your body may or may not be ready, and that's really going to be one of those experiences where they may have to put you on pit. Pit is like a rail is like a train pushing you down a railroad track, versus walking along smoothly along a sidewalk is when your body does it naturally. That's my own opinion. I've experienced both, and I can see why people get an epidural when you get pit, because that's yeah. how intense it is. And so if you will let yourself and your body go at its own flow, and then if you do find that you need to have the baby sooner, look into some of these other things. Yeah. And so um, don't push yourself, because I loved my last two labors so much more than even my second, because I let my body do it on its own. And... Um, it was such a breeze <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the last two. Um, yeah. So. And I did the same thing with Paige. I was in school. I wanted to have her on a certain day, and so we looked up every remedy I could think of to get her here. And we were kind of almost violent about it, almost like, get out, baby, intense. get out, you baby, get out, baby. Intense. Yeah. To let things be gentler and, and to just be a little bit more patient and wait. And isn't he beautiful? Yeah. And he did so good. When he came out, he was such a calm baby. All of our babies have been really good on the after scar. You can tell by how well they do when they come out. What do you say? Yeah. They're such really, happy babies. Really, really he's not happy. happy right now. But he's ha really happy. He did so good on all his scores. They're just, they're almost, almost immediately ready to nurse. Yeah. It's pretty neat how well the babies do after, too. 
you know. And that's really what it's all about. I don't know if we really said that, but the whole time, the reason I'm doing it not, is not because I want to be this powerful woman right. that did it without drugs. It's the fact that I want it to be as safe for him as possible. And I'm willing to... Um, do the homework to, to do, find out do how the to do the happen. best I can. Like mm -hmm. I understand that some people it's really intense and they have long labors and and maybe they didn't get their pelvic you know changed like yeah. you did. And um, I understand that there's some people that it it really is that intense. And I have very dear friends that it they they could not at one point they they did the hypnobirthing and it was just too hard for them. And um, but I think that that's what it's about is as a mom doing everything you can do to make it a good experience for your baby yeah. and the safest. And whether that means that you do the hypnobirthing or something else, the longest that you can, um, really it's about doing what you feel is the very best and that you can handle. So, And such a great reward. I know. It's so cute. Say hi. Isn't that hair amazing? Yeah. Say hi. Hi, little one. Hi. He's such a good sport. Yeah. Well... If you guys have any questions, you're welcome to um, ask, and and I'll try to put up a link to the Mary F. Mongan. It's Mongan method. The Mongan, the Mongan method. method, and she she has a thing in here too. We'll ask um, Julianne to post it. But one thing my hypnobirthing instructor really highly recommended is watching a certain website, which I'll have her link on there too, because what you really want to focus on is what you want instead of what you're fearing of. And I did that very differently with Paige versus Kaya. With Paige, I watched every single birthing video on YouTube. With Kaya, I only watched the positive ones. I didn't watch the scary ones. I watched the short labor, happy ending. All, those were the only ones I watched. Because the, the idea is what you think about is what your body will do. Yeah. And so if you want to have a nice delivery and a nice labor, what you focus on is a nice delivery and a nice labor. Though the book does prepare you for things that go off course um, so that you know what you can do in off course because it does happen. Um, what you really want to focus on is the perfect one. So yeah. I will have her put this link on there, um, but don't watch any of the other videos. Yeah. <laughs> that's what my hypnobirthing instructor said she said do not watch any of the other videos it's the perfect way that it should happen you want to train your body to do that in your mind and then there's also a recipe for the parmesan chicken for if you haven't gone into labor it, they, they will give you your m meal free if you haven't gone into labor within three days of making it yeah and, and eating it so how our bodies work yeah so those might be kind of fun for some of you too so. and thanks for watching and we'll talk thanks to you thanks for later. having me Julie